Yes, well, we all know Americans love their cars. That's right, and as technology changes the way we drive, we can't forget that the country's love affair with hitting the road began more than 100 years ago with a man named Henry Ford and his Model T. Matt King gives us a look back. One sunny day in May, four New Jersey men gathered on a leafy street in Cranford to drive four vehicles built by the same manufacturer a combined 392 years ago. People always ask me one question. How did you get the car here? I said, I drove it. Mike Bevilacqua, Bob Calvano behind him, Joe Henshaw next to Bob, and Jeff Jones in the driver's seat all own Ford Model Ts they show by driving. It's a very, very simple machine. It'll run in the face of adversity. Before driving it to this meeting, Bob last started his Woody two years ago. Half a century before that, he and Jeff found another T in a farmer's field and bought it for $25. He pulled the spark plug out with his hand and he says, he looks down in there, he says, it's full of water. Two years later, the engine two was years running. Two years later, the engine was running. He bought a piston at a flea market for 50 cents. That was 50 years ago, it's still in there. Between 1909 and 1927, the Ford Motor Company sold 15 million Model Ts, which remained the highest production of any vehicle until the Volkswagen Beetle surpassed it more than 40 years later. When I was a kid, I used to run on, on, on kerosene. Kerosene, yeah. Uh, very there. quiet it runs. Other companies manufactured other cars before the Ford Motor Company introduced the Model T in 1908, 1909. Ford manufactured other cars before it sold its first T. For the company's pioneering of the assembly line and that process's ability to remove the man from the manufacturing allowed Ford to sell this motor car for cheaper than any automobile before it. By the mid-teens, he, he got the price down so low that anyone could afford to buy a Model T. Inside the remains of a pie company's oven in downtown Brooklyn, Lenny Schiller keeps 56 classic and cars and trucks, which he says all run but might not all stop. I'm renowned for not liking to drive. I just love tinkering with old cars. If the T taught every American to drive, Lenny believes the golden age of the automobile dawned a couple of decades later after World War II, when the car companies that survived the war and the Great Depression before it redesigned their fleets so seemingly no two cars on the road looked or ran alike. But after the mid-60s, Lenny observed the end of this era of American automotive innovation, durability, and design. The uh, American manufacturers started taking their customers for granted, assuming that people would buy a new car every two years. And in 1966, Toyota introduced the Corolla. You could say that that's the car that really uh, put the kibosh on Detroit. Smaller cars with better gas mileage and a smaller carbon tire track dominate the car industry's present and the starting line for its future. These cars that I'm standing next to are terrible polluters. They don't really belong on the road. Henry Ford's dream of a man buying just one car in his lifetime and retrofitting that vehicle himself as he saw fit died with the invention of plastics and the disposable automobiles of today. Today you pick up the hood and you go, uh-uh, and you close it. I have to bring it to a dealer because I don't even know what's going on. And in the future, even in this wild giant country the motor car allowed us to tame and pave, vehicle ownership may no longer come standard. We're studying what kinds of vehicles fit in that, in that world. Executive Director of the Nissan Future Lab, Dr. Rachel Wynn, oversaw the creation of this new mobility concept vehicle, already on the streets of Europe, but shown here silently motoring along at up to 25 miles per hour on Manhattan's Upper West Side. This 100% electric car might one day fill a need for those commuting short distances in an urban environment. Oh, wow, look at that. Car comes to me. The future of driving should change not only what we drive, but who or what drives our vehicles. Mercedes, Tesla, and other manufacturers already offer semi-autonomous cars that seem a lot closer to fully autonomous than company spokesmen admit on the record. Lenny sees the time of sports cars like this 1953 Jaguar XK120 Super Sports Roadster nearing an end. More than 100 years after Ford put the steering wheel on the left side of the car, all but putting railroads out of business and giving every man, woman, and child the freedom to roam, this country with more miles of road than any other looks toward a future where most of us never operate our mode of transit, leaving the machines that drove this nation to the status of superpower dusty and rusting and rendering the once communal romance of navigating the open roads that connect our land's two shining seas and all its gleaming cities between an experience foreign to those who live here.
In downtown Brooklyn, I'm Matt King, Fox 5 News.